Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Wish Infinite. In this video of Playwright with TypeScript series, I am going to cover about introduction of API. I have also created separate playlist for the videos related to the API testing with the Playwright. If you just want to learn about the API testing through the Playwright, you can access the separate playlist. So what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is a set of rules and protocols that defines how two software programs or systems can communicate with each other. API acts as an intermediary between two systems, allow them to exchange data and functionality. Here we can understand it with the help of this diagram. So we have two systems, system one and system two. We can also call system one as client and system two as server. And these two systems wants to communicate with each other. So when I'm saying the communication, so here system one would be sending the request to the system two with the help of this API. And in return, system two will send the response to the system one through the API. So here API acts as an intermediary between two systems, allow them to exchange data and functionality. Here we can also understand it like this, that API allows web and mobile application to access data from DB or API allows web and mobile application to access data or functionality of a third party server. Here we can also understand it with the help of an example. So make my trip is a website where we can search for the different flights for the different locations and we can also book the flight. So here make my trip is the client who wants to get all the details related to the flight or the inquiry which user will do and how it can be done. So for that, all these airline companies have provided their API onto their server, which make my trip can access. So let's say user have selected the information like from location is New York to location is New Delhi onto the 30th April user wants to travel where the class is economy. And once user click onto the search button, so make my trip will send the HTTP request. So let's take the example of Air India. So once user click onto the search button, this make my trip will send a HTTP request to the API of this Air India. And then that API will go to this Air India server with all the request details. And then Air India will send the response to the API for the request, which it has received. And then the API will give that response to the make my trip client. So here make my trip developers are using that particular HTTP response, which they have received from the air India API to show all these details where we are able to see that what are flight timings, what is the specific fare, right? It is the nonstop flight. So all these details we have got from the response. Similarly, user can also book the flight where user will have to give all the details and then make my trip will send a request to the air india api and then that api will go to this air india server with all the details and then air india will return it with the response and the same response we will receive with the help of an api and to access the apis also let's say we took the example of this air india right who is providing their api okay and then make my trip was accessing that particular api so to access this API, this make my trip will have to provide the API key for the security purpose, right? Otherwise anyone would be able to access the API of the Air India. That should not happen, right? There should be some security that client with the specific key only can access the specific API. Apart from the API key, there are other different type of authentication like bearer token, GWT bearer, basic auth. So it depends on project to project that which kind of authentication is required for the APIs. If you are working on to the API testing, let me know what kind of authentication you are using. If you do not have that information, you can get in touch with the developer. They can provide you the details. For the practice purpose, you will also find some APIs where no authentication is required. So it depends right on to the project to project that which kind of authentication is there for the APIs. So now let's move further to create these APIs. Developer need to follow some set of standards. So in the previous example, flight companies have provided the APIs. So their developers need to follow some set of standards. So for that, we have most commonly used APIs, which are REST API. REST API provides some rules and regulations to create APIs. And here Playwright can be used to get access of these REST APIs of your application. And then we can perform testing on it. Here, let's first look into all the components of the REST API. So as the tester, you should be aware about all these details even before starting the API testing. Here, first we have base URL. 
the base url where url stands for uniform resource locator is the starting point for accessing the api's resources the base url includes the protocol for an example http or https domain name and optionally a version here i have added these two examples so first example is related to the cat api and the second example is this restful hyphen booker dot heroku app dot com so these are two sites so this the cat api site provides different apis through which we can fetch the details related to the cat their images their breed and so many information we can get with the help of these apis these are all sample apis and the second one is this restful hyphen booker dot heroku app dot com here we can get different apis where they are providing different information related to the hotel booking we would be using these apis into our upcoming lectures to do the practice so here into the examples you will see we have this https so this is the protocol after that we have put colon double slash and then this is the domain name and here as i have told we can also have optionally a version so in case of this api we have this v1 as the version and this one is optional right in some cases you will have it and in some cases you will not have it and into the second example this https is the protocol and then we have this domain which is restful hyphen booker dot heroku app dot com and in this case we do not have any version so these are two examples of this base url now after the base url we have these resources so resources refers to a specific endpoint or collection of the data within the rest api so after this base url we would be having these resources so in this case this is the base url and after that we have put this forward slash and then the images with this we would be able to access the details related to the cats images in this case we have put the resources as the breed so it will provide data related to the breeds of the cats and in this example we have used this restful booker base url till here and after that we have put forward slash and then the booking and with this we would be able to get data related to all the bookings here also you can see the same it returns the ids of all the bookings that exists within the api so different resources will give you different data after the resources the next component is the path parameters so path parameters are the variable within the path of the url that are used to identify specific resources or the elements path parameters are commonly used in rest apis to identify specific resources or perform operation on those resources so here you can understand it with the help of an example so here this is the base url right and then after the base url we have this images as the resource and after the resources i have put this forward slash and then we need to provide the specific path parameter value so here you will see this is the base url and then the resources and here i have provided the value of this image id this one so this value is the value provided for the image id path parameter so you can consider this value as the path parameter here i have added one more example where this is the base url and then booking is the resources and after that we have put this forward slash and this is the path parameter here we need to give the actual value so here i have given this value which is 1 so here it will fetch all the data related to the booking for the booking id 1 so this path parameter is the optional parameter it depends on the requirement that we need to give the path parameter or not and after the path parameter i have given this sub resources and its path parameter so what it is so in rest api design resources can have hierarchical relationships where one resource may be considered as a sub resource of another for an example in a blogging api a blog post resource might have sub resources such as comments likes or tags so the main resource would be the blog post and its sub resources would be comments likes or tags related to that particular blog post here i have given some examples of the sub resources and its parameters so as we saw this part is of a base url and then this is the main resource and after that we need to give this path parameter to access the specific resource and then again i have put this forward slash and here again i have put this resource and this resource is sub resource of this particular main resource and after the forward slash we have also put the path parameter for this particular sub resource here into the second example 
we have not provided any path parameter, but we have used the base URL, the main resource, and then the sub resource. So this thing is also optional thing. It depends on the requirements that how you need to provide the sub resources and its parameters. Now coming on to the next component, which is the query parameter. This is also optional parameter. Query parameters are additional parameters added to the end of the URL that provide supplementary information to a server when making a request. They are typically used to filter, sort, paginate or customize the response data written by the server. Here are some examples which I've added. So this is your base URL till here. And then we have put the resource name after the forward slash and then and after this, we have provided this query parameter. So here, if you will see the syntax, so to put the query parameter, first you need to put the question mark and after the question mark, we need to give the key value pair. So this is the key, which is limit. And after that, we need to put the equals and then we need to put the value for the specific key. So here, this query parameter is kind of putting the filter just to get the 10 values from this particular API. Here into the second example, if you will see, we have used the base URL, then the resource. And after that, we have put this question mark limit equals to 10. So this is first query parameter. And after that, I have put this ampersand sign. And this is our second query parameter where we are saying that page equals to zero. So this page equals to zero query parameter we are using for the pagination where we want to get the details from the first page only. And after that, again, I've put this ampersand sign, then I've given this order equals to descending. So we want to get all the cat information from this images resource where the query parameters are limit equals to 10. So we want to get only 10 records from the page number zero into the descending order. So like this, you can provide different query parameters. Here I've given one more example where I've used this restful booker API with this booking resource where we have given this first name equals to Sally and last name equals to Brown. So here it will provide the booking related to this first name and last name only. So like this, you can use these query parameters depends on your different requirements. So after using all these informations like base URL, resources, path parameters, query parameters, we can create our final endpoint. So endpoints are the URLs that represent specific resources or services in the web application or the API. And this endpoint will consider of base URL resources and then it can have query or path parameters. These two things are optional and depends on the requirement. So this final endpoint we would be using to send our HTTP request. And apart from this final endpoint, we should also be known about the header. So headers are additional information sent along with the HTTP request or the response. Headers provide a metadata about the request or response such as content type, authentication, credentials and more. So with our HTTP request, we would also be sending the header which will have additional information related to the content type or authentication credentials and more. So once we will perform the practical, we will see about this headers into more details. So apart from the header, we also have this body. In REST API design, the body refers to a payload of an HTTP request or response. It contains the data being sent from the client to the server in a request that is request body or from the server to the client in a response that is response body. So here you can consider this body as the payload of the HTTP request or the response. So the payload which we would be sending with the HTTP request is called request body and the payload which we get with the response is called as the response body. So about this body also we will see into more details once we do the practice. So once we have all these details like base URL, resources, these optional parameters like path parameter, query parameter, header, body, so we can perform different operations onto the resources. For that, we need to use the HTTP methods and the HTTP methods are used to define the actions or operations that can be performed onto the resources. Here, we would be performing CRUD operation. C is for create, R is for read, U is for update and D is for delete. And for that, we have different commonly used HTTP methods. So first one is the post, which is used to create new resources onto the server. So here by using the post, we would be performing create operation. Then we have get method, which is used to retrieve data from the server. Here we would be performing read operation. This put HTTP method is used to update existing resources onto the server. This is for update operation. And then we have this delete method, which is used to remove resources from the server. So here we would be deleting the resource. So this is the delete operation. We would be looking about all these methods into more details into my upcoming videos. So once we perform this CRUD operation using all the details, 
on to the apis so in return we get the status code so status codes are standardized numerical codes returned in the http response header to indicate the outcome of the client's request to the server and here are most common status codes used in the rest apis so this 200 is the okay which tells that the request was successful 201 is for created and it tells that new resource has been created 400 is for bad request which means that request could not be understood by the server itself 401 is for unauthorized where it tells that the request requires authentication and the client's credentials are missing or invalid 404 is for not found where the resource could not be found onto the server itself 500 is for internal server error so here server encountered an unexpected condition that prevented it from the fulfilling the request so in that case we have got this 500 internal server error once we will do the practice we will be able to see some of the status codes there so these were all the basic details which you should be aware about even before performing the manual testing or the automation testing of the apis and that's it for this particular video let me give you the quick recap so here we saw that apis stands for the application programming interface and by using the apis two systems can communicate with each other so here we have this system one and system two and by using this api they are able to communicate with each other you can also call the system one as the client and system two as the server where the client would be sending the http request to the api and then api will go to the server or the db and then it will get the response from this server and give it back to the client and client can use that particular response to show it onto the ui or they can perform any operation there and we saw that most commonly used apis are the rest apis and playwright can be used to get access of the rest api and then it can perform different testing operation on it here we saw that rest apis have different components like base url which consists of the http or https protocol domain name and optional version it has resources which refers to a specific endpoint or collection of the data it has path parameter or query parameter path parameter can be given after putting the forward slash and then its value query parameter need to put question mark and then the key equals to its value and by using the base url resources and these query or path parameters we can create our final endpoint and with this final endpoint we would be sending the http request and with this http request we can also pass some additional information with the header with the http request we can also pass the body and in the response also we get the body from the server to the client which is called the response body and by using all these details like final endpoint header and the body we can perform cred operation where we can use different http methods like post is for creation get is for read put is for updating the details and delete is for deleting the details and once we perform these cred operation using the http methods onto the api we get different status codes in the http response header and here are some common status codes like 200 ok 201 created 400 for the bad request 401 for unauthorized 400 for the not found and 500 for the internet server error and that's it from my end and into the upcoming videos we would be doing the practice by using all these concepts which we just learned so stay tuned for the upcoming videos you can click on to this first card to go to the next video you can click on to the second card to access the whole playwright tutorial playlist if you have any comments questions or doubts you can let me know into the comment section below Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.